And for several years, I ran my head into this block wall, thinking that my skill in the industry would make me a success in business. I wish someone had set me down and told me, no, take the time, learn and grow, but understand your business. Scott, I really believe that my goal should be to teach my team everything they need to leave me, but treat them well enough so that they want to stay. Hey everybody, good morning or good afternoon. This is Scott Pieper with Mobilization Funding and I am really excited to bring our second Real MFR series to you guys. And one of my favorite guests today, I'm gonna to share with you all. His name is Kamel Williams. He's the president, CEO, founder of Prime Electrical Services, Inc. out of Orlando, Florida, and has been a client of ours and become a good friend and someone I really look up to and admire um, what he's done and accomplished in his business. So I'm really excited for him to be able to tell his story today. Kamel, welcome. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate the opportunity. How are you? Good. I'm very good. If you don't mind, Kamel, I think what would be good for everyone is to know just a little bit about you, your background, how you landed in Florida, where you're from, a little bit about just the general basis of Prime Electrical Services so folks can understand a little bit about um, your business, size-wise, people, etc. And then we'll dive into some questions and go from there. You know, we can tell lots of good stories. Okay, Scott. Go ahead. Thanks. My initial visit to Florida was probably back in 83, excuse me, 81, I'm sorry. I came down here to Florida Memorial University. I went to be, uh, went to have participate in the HBCU. I just had to have that HBCU experience. Came down to Florida Memorial, uh, went back to Detroit. Later, I'm originally from Detroit, went back to Detroit. And, and I gotta tell you, Scott, it's important I point out, the reason I left Detroit because I was determined not to work in the automotive industry. I came down here, became edu got educated, uh, followed my path in the electrical industry, and ended up back in Detroit working in the automotive industry, but on a different level. I mean, I wasn't on the line. I was working as, a, as an electrician there. And it was a great opportunity. Uh, I later came back down in, uh, I want to say, 2006. Decided to plant my roots here and uh, started Prime Electrical Services in 2008. Great opportunity. Uh, work was growing. Now, everyone said at that time, I got, it's important I tell you, everyone said at that time that it was the worst possible time to start a business. This was 2008. We all know how 2008 was. Uh, but in my opinion, it seemed like the best time because no one was, was building anything new, but everyone was repairing. Hence the name Prime Electrical Services. I focused my business specifically on service work then, and that was my niche to get back into the electrical industry and own my own company. And from then, I, I was in Lakeland, Florida, back in 2008. I moved to Orlando, and here's where we are right now. I'm going to pop to Florida. You know, you mentioned that you definitively knew you didn't want to be in the automotive industry, but did you know what industry you wanted to be in, and how did you ultimately decide on construction? You know what? It was, I, I knew I wanted to be electrical. As I've told you before, my, my uncle was a master electrician, and on weekends and on summer vacation, my mother, I was one of those children that my mother said, do something with them. Take them out of here. Get them out of here. <laughs> so he would take me out in the electrical industry. Now, it's, a, it's important that, that I tell you this. When I started construction first, my father, my grandfather was a mason, a brick mason. And he took me out one weekend and brought me back in and told my mother, keep that boy in school. Like, I don't want him on my job. <laughs> so when my uncle came along and I found that in the electrical industry, it was a chance for me to not only use my love for math and my hands-on experience, but but to build something and, and be able to turn the light switch on and see the after effects. And that made all the difference to me. And that's what I focused on. And I knew it would, it would be the electrical industry from that moment. It's funny, you get a lot of experience from your, the people you're surrounded with the most all throughout life, particularly younger, you know, spending that time with your uncle, giving you the guidance and instructions, you know, what else did you learn from your uncle aside from just wanting to get into construction? He taught me to approach everything optimistically and to think about things. See, being, my uncle was also an instructor, electrical instructor. So he not only taught me to trade, but he taught me how to think in the trade because that's what we need as children. I, I just needed someone to direct me. And between he and my father, 
he kept me thinking. He taught me to understand the business because he wasn't a he wasn't a business owner. He worked for another electrical contractor. In fact, he worked for one of the first black electrical contractors in Detroit at the time. And that guy was phenomenal. So just being around him and seeing him raised my level to, to know that that's exactly what I want to do at some point. That's really cool. One of the things that I heard you say, and I really want to point this out to the audience, I think is important. And, you know, you mentioned 2008 and everyone told you it was the worst time and not the time to start, but you thought it was the best time. And I can hear in your voice and knowing you a little better, but especially now hearing you talk about your uncle, that positivity and wisdom and guidance, I think he instilled in you also helped you see opportunities and see the playing field differently than other folks that are, even the, even though they're telling you this is terrible, don't do it, this is the worst mm -hmm. economy, don't start the business, you found a way not only to add value, but really drive a new business and create a, a culture around success. And I think, I, want, I think it's important to point that out to the people that are listening to this. If you didn't hear that subtly, that's the key. It's how your vision of it is, not what everyone else's vision of it is. Well, it, it was the long-term vision is what I had. And, and, and trust me, it was a hard sell. Imagine telling my wife that in the middle of this worst time in, in a long time, I'm going out to start my own business. But my focus was that this business, 2008, is going to cause a lot of businesses to fail. I realized that. And the market will pick up in three to four years. And if I started right then, three to four years later, I'd have history. So now when I walked into a general contractor and asked them to give me the opportunity, I wasn't just starting when times were good. They can look back and say, well, these guys been in business for four or five years. He's, he's lasted this long. He made it through 2008, 9, 10. Granted, it was small, the smaller numbers, I say small numbers, they were decent numbers, but compared to now, they were much smaller numbers. But I survived it and, and I learned a lot. What I didn't prepare for during those times was their banks were not loaning any money then. There was very little capital available and nor was I in a position to, to go after it. So the struggle was real, <laughs> it was real. But the goal was to survive. You know, my, uh, my uncle, as well as a, a guy I heard from several years later, made a statement to me and they said, it's not how well you perform your craft but it's how long you can withstand the politics of your industry. And I never forgot that. So I knew if I got into it, dug in deep and stayed there, I'll eventually reap some success. Uh, that's excellent advice. Just, just keep going. Be consistent with your energy and your efforts and your strategy and make the adjustments when, need, when you do and continue to evaluate and innovate, but keep going and let Absolutely. time work in your favor. You know, it's a great segue to something else I want to talk to you about. And I think you're really uniquely positioned to talk about this for all the reasons you just mentioned. But, it, you know, construction is a tough business overall. And electricity and electricians are even, even a tougher portion, depending on different scopes. And I think you've done a good job with your folks, both instilling a culture and managing those attributes. Can you talk a little bit about how you do it and how you manage that and how you help your employees? You know, my focus, I have one word in my company, and I always say discipline. Stay focused and stay disciplined because you're right, the electrical industry is a, is a tough industry because we are not just required when we look at blueprints to understand the electrical side. We have to understand the HVAC side, the plumbing side. We need to read the architectural drawings. We need the fire alarm drawings because all these things that tie into our system. You can take plumbing, and plumbing is a standalone system. HVAC is a standalone system. Electrical, we need to either put power on those flushable toilets or put power to HVAC use. So my team has to have the discipline to not just look at the electrical drawings, but every drawing that's in there. So I, I hold them to a higher standard. And it's not always easy, because some guys want to go in there and put a switch in. And trust me, Scott, I have my share of guys who come in and say, I'm a journeyman electrician because I know I lie at my grandmother's basement and it works just fine. So I have to deal with that. And then I have to always bring them back to discipline. You have to make sure you become a student of your industry, student of your craft. You know, and you'll hear me talk through this conversation. I'll use the two words, uh, electrical and contracting. When I talk about electrical, I'm focusing on the industry itself. 
and you and my technicians like Phil have to be a student of their business. They have to keep current with the technology because it's changing every day, it's evolving. So what I focus is just keep learning, keep growing and stay disciplined and you'll be a great electrician. And that's been the secret to my success in maintaining uh, adequate personnel in the field. You've now taken that discipline, you've, you're teaching into it, you're educating to it, you're building it into your safety programs. I happen to be in and out of your office and talking to you all the time, and I know what kind of systems and processes you have, and all that stuff isn't an accident. But not everybody can instill those or know to know how to. And if you were gonna, if you were gonna counsel a a, a newer entrepreneur starting not only just an electrical business but any construction mm -hmm. business, what guidance would you give them around how to take what you just talked about, but instilling that into your team? I always tell my guys, I got three A's that I deal with attitude, ability, and attendance. And if you have any two of those, I can help you get the last one. So when I talk to my team, I try to stress that they find something that they love and master it. If it's conduit you like running, continue to run conduit. If it's why you like pulling, continue to But know the industry, focus on what you really love in industry. From the administration side, I, I tell them to constantly learn. Constantly go to school. I put, I put all type of uh, financial aid programs in place. I have several of my members who have their master's degree that we paid for. I have several members who have bachelor's degree that we paid for because I stress higher learning. Again, it's all part of that discipline. Scott, I really believe that my goal should be to teach my team everything they need to leave me, but treat them well enough so that they want to stay. And that's the only way I can succeed. I mean, did everybody just hear what he said? I mean, that is so powerful, Kamal. And you couldn't, one, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think you know, discipline is how you started the conversation, but what you built on right there, particularly the three A's, if you have attitude, ability, and attendance, any two of those, you can teach the third. I mean, that's, those are core values that you're really instilling. And the fact that you focus on continued learning and higher learning, I mean, I just think that's so important. And I just want everybody here listening at it listening to this to really pick that up that's a key thing how do you talk about how do you bring that into the daily you know i know you didn't just have one meeting and bring that up how do you incorporate that incorporate that daily weekly monthly with your team i tell them when they when they walk in the door and, and it's real important i try to teach my team to be independent thinkers because ultimately in order for me to move my business to the next level i need to be in a position where i can trust my employees to do exactly what they're supposed to do without coming to me. So I try to explain to them and every time, if you bring a problem to me, bring to me a potential solution. That means I'm, I'm forcing them to think of, think about what needs to happen and to utilize their skills and, and letting them know that their opinions are very important. I don't want them dependent upon me making a decision. I have consistent meetings with them. I consistently try to guide them but I tell them if in doubt, if there's any concern, and I don't want to sound selfish when I say this, but I said, if there's any concern when you're building, there's two things you need to remember. It's the decision you make going to make prime electrical money, or is it going to save prime electrical money? It's, you have to fall into one of these categories because ultimately this is a for-profit business. And the stronger the company gets, the more I can give to my team, the more I can help them grow the more I can put into their education, the more I can put into their bonus structure. So as long as they continue to think, make decisions themselves, and, and I keep reminding them that these are the key rules, save the company money and make the company money, it helps them grow. That's, that's how I do it on a daily basis. Awesome, man. I'm so glad you shared that. That's, that is the key and focusing on the time you spend with them and making it quality time and empowering them I think you're going to hit your goals. And that's why people do stay with you because they, they want to, not because they have to or need to. Well, and, and it, it's difficult. And being a small business and some of the challenges, Scott, and, and don't know if I'm getting ahead, but it's important that I point this out. Some of the challenges we have in order to competitively keep your team, an owner has to make sacrifices. Prime Electrical Services offers 401k, which is a very, and we have a very aggressive matching program. We offer major medical. We offer health and welfare. I mean, we offer a lot of things that small businesses typically shy away from because they just plain and simply can't afford them. 
But in order to get the quality talent you need, in order to give your people a home and let your people know that you're concerned about them and you care about them, you have to make the sacrifice. Now, that means taking less home, but you're building a team that's going to stay with you and that's committed to growing with you because they understand your sacrifice. So it's, it's, it's all necessary. I couldn't agree with you more. Let me transition a little bit with you. You're a business owner. You're an entrepreneur. You've fought the fights and struggles. You're also an African-American doing it in this world. And I think there's different challenges that are out there. Some are well-known, some aren't. And I think you navigate those so well doing it. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about what you feel are some of those challenges that you've had to overcome and how you've done it and how you've utilized your, your own abilities and skills to survive and thrive and what you would suggest other young African-American entrepreneurs, what they can do or should do or how they should think about that to get to a point where they can be successful and thrive with what's out there available. If I had to sum that up, Scott, I, I would say, first of all, surround yourself with people smarter than you. That's really important. Uh, as an African-American, our biggest problem, and, we, and, and I have to be transparent here, is we don't have generations of running a business and doing this. We're first generation or second generation. I talk about my grandfather being a mason, a brick mason, but he never dealt with the volume that we deal with here in today's society. Our numbers are, I mean, he never would have thought his grandson would be doing the type of work that I deal with. So we don't have a father or a grandfather, someone to go to for our business needs. My uncle was able to teach me the trade, but not the business. I have to learn that. And that's through surrounding myself with people smarter than me. That's the first thing. Find other African-American businesses and have an open forum. Be in a position where you guys can regularly meet and talk. That's the other side. Third, which is, which is really important, is I think the most underrated positions in, in, in business, and again, when you're dealing with limited capital, you tend to not spend money on things you can't see, things that you don't realize, you don't think are important. And that's accountants. You have to have a good accountant. And that's, that's invisible to most people. Uh, they buy QuickBooks and they log on and they put in a few numbers and it spits out the results and they, they think they're accountants. But no, you need a trained professional. Camille, you bring up, I mean, I, your points that you talk about and surrounding yourself with smart people, talented people, different experiences, meeting and talking with others, finding your accountant and a CFO, and then, of course, providing capital. The one thing that's in there that I think a lot of business owners, African-American, white, Indian, I don't think it matters. Any, I, I talk to all different types of business owners in this particular setting, but is pride. Um, and, and, you know, you're a prideful person, but you don't let your pride get in the way of just straightforward, realistic conversations. I mean, just listen to what you just said just now. And I think getting out and surrounding yourself with smarter people, it, it, it shows your confidence level in yourself because you know what you know and you know what you don't. How did you learn those things you provided or how do you? Where did you get that from? Scott, I'll tell you, a lot of it was trial and error. I, I, I can say, you might have heard, heard me say this before, I probably couldn't find anyone out here who has made as many mistakes as I've made because I went out and listened to the mass. I mean, I, I attended every outreach, every event, every small business seminar that I could go to. And what they would always tell me is, these are the things I needed to do in order to be successful. What they didn't understand and what's, what's most difficult is the people that were talking to me were not business owners. They had never been business owners. They had never had to make payroll. See, here's what happens. In a small business, you start, you have good credit, you built your credit to that point, and you're ready to go off on your own. Well, what happens as you go on business, the first thing you have to do, everything that you buy, you have to sign for personal, which means multiple inquiries of your credit multiple inquiries and every time you get inquired that credit goes down so now you're in a position where you got your new truck that you signed for and you had a credit inquiry you got your lease building that you signed for you got your accounts with all your vendors that you signed for and your credit just went from 700 down to 580 just because of inquiries you're paying your bills on time but now your cash flow is low 
So at this point, you got to walk into a financial institution. What do we think? We got to go to SBA. We're going to go to his bank, and they're going to give us all the money we need because that's what they said at these seminars. When you walk in that bank, and that guy pulls your credit and says, you know what? You're, from your balance sheet and your credit, we're not going to loan you any money. And, you, and, and at this point, it's too late. So what do you do? You answer that phone call. Someone saying, hey, we'll loan you money right now today on your receivables. We'll give you cash right now. And you take it, and it starts a downward trend. Oh, now, you had good intentions when you started this. So that's the cycle that small businesses and primarily African-American business go through. So when I say you have to put your pride aside, you have to realize that business is very personal. And everyone says, no, nah, no, it's not personal. It's just business. No. Business is what feeds your family. It's what pays your mortgage. It's what pays for the car that your wife drives, but it's school that your children go to. Now you have to ask yourself, is your pride worth sacrificing those things? When you realize it, you realize, no, it's not. Then my business to me is very personal. So I have to put my pride aside and go in there and learn all I can learn, grow with these people, follow their advice, my opinions matter when I get back in my office, but when I walk in their office, their opinions are the only thing I need to focus on. That's part of my growth. And I did it the other way, it didn't work. <laughs> so You just said something that I think I really wanna make sure everybody hears is tying those decisions and your pride and discipline to something that's most important to you and what's more important really than family. When you, when you link those two things from a business perspective to those decisions you're making are for your family. How are they going to impact your family? You're going to make better decisions. You're, you're going to drop your pride. And I think everyone listening to this, if you don't take anything else from this call today, I think that might be the most powerful thing you said already, because you're going to make better decisions when you're thinking about it from your wife, your children, your other family members. You're, going to, you're, going to, you're not going to let pride get in the way. And one other thing that, that, that's really important is it's so intimidating walking into financial institutions because there's no secrets. They don't leave anything on the table. They want to see all your pay stubs, you know, what you paid, what you spent on dinner last night. I mean, they tear, they tear into you. So it's a lot easier to do that with someone who you can put a name to the face and who's willing to talk to you and they say, I need this because of this and I need this because of that. And it's a little less intimidating when you do that. Just imagine buying a house 10 times over. <laughs> That's what it's like when, when they're getting ready to loan you money. And it, and it can be exasperating. It really can. You've talked a lot about really good topics, and I've tried to focus people on those specific things. But is there, is there one thing that you believe really separates a contractor's success or failure? Yes. Knowing your business and mastering the ability to balance your business. Let's balance your business. Two ways that a contractor can fail. One is by undereating or starvation. The other one is overeating. I mean, and those are the two ways. And so you have to get a balance. You have to know when to say no to a job, when to move forward with the job. You have to truly understand your financial numbers to understand whether or not you can finance this job, whether you, your forecasting is correct and you have and you have adequate forecasting. Uh, I mean. Those are the things that I would tell any small business. Don't just go and I've, I've, I've seen it happen a thousand times. I got a $2 million job and this is going to change the company. Well, maybe so. But once you do your due diligence and realize that three months down the road, you're going to be out of money and someone else will be finishing this job. So I, I stress it to everyone. Know your business and balance your business appropriately. Know when to say yes and when to say no. Great advice. I'd add one thing to that too. I want to make sure people know that I myself in this business, I don't, I'm not the person that is the best at finance and forecast and understand a business. I have a fantastic partner and a CFO that hands me those tools. And then when I see them in a format, I know how to make those great decisions that way. But you don't have to be the chef. You just have to know how to, evaluate the plate at the end. Absolutely. I think what I want to make sure is the connection. You don't need to go to accounting school. You, don't need, you need to just find somebody that can give you the information you need 
in a simple, easy format that you can make decisions off of. And, and follow the advice and listen to them. You know, that, that, again, that's where your pride has to be put aside. You have to listen to them. You, you brought them there to give you the best advice. And it means nothing if you don't listen to it. Last question for you. Is there one thing you wish you knew if you could go back to the very beginning and think about anybody that's out here now starting their business? Is there one thing you wish you knew or you wish you were told that you hadn't addressed today or that you just want to highlight from something you've already talked about today? That's that one thing you wish you knew in the beginning that you know now. Maybe we save somebody some years of headache. <laughs> Man, I've, I've had this conversation so many times and I've talked to people. And I, I would think that, seriously, when I walked into it, if I understood that being good at my craft would not ensure success in, in me being a contractor, I wish someone had explained that to me. Someone had said, because I felt, you know, I had so much hubris, I felt that, I was the best electrician out there, which means I'm gonna be a phenomenal contractor. And for several years, I ran my head into this block wall thinking that my skill in the industry would make me a success in business. I wish someone had set me down and told me, no, please become a student of your business. As much as you are a student of the craft, become a student of your business. Surround yourself with good people. I know I've said that before, but I can't repeat it enough. Surround yourself with people who know more than you. Take the time, learn and grow, but understand your business. And no one told me that. I never knew it. I thought I could buy software that could do it all for me. It didn't work. <laughs> so I, I, I found out that again the hard way. Kamel, I'm going to leave it there. I don't know if I could improve on that any better. And I just want to tell you again, thank you so much for taking the time, the effort, the energy to share your stories, your honesty, um, your discipline, yourself, um, what you're doing. I think we certainly help people today. If, if there's anyone out there that's listening to this, they're going to get at least one or if not more things from this conversation that we've had and your honesty and your ability to share it and talk through it. Um, that I know people are going to be better off. And I just want to say thank you very much for doing that. Scott, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Well, everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this time. If you have any questions, you need anything, you can always find this on our YouTube channel. You can always find this on our website. There's tons of resources out there that are all free to you. You can download them. You can get them. There's cash flow models, all kinds of stuff about business, construction topics that we provide totally free to you just on our website, on the resources page. So feel free to go there. Thank you again, Kamel. I appreciate it. Everyone have a great afternoon, evening, or day. Take care.